Trains, July 4th, and fireworks on this episode of Barnstable Today. I'm Melissa Chartrand. inaugural run at the end of May, the Cape Flyer weekend train service from South Station to Hyannis has been a huge success. According to Thomas Kerr, administrator of the Cape Cod Regional Transit Authority, the Cape Flyer train has already exceeded their ridership expectations. To accommodate as many passengers as possible coming from Boston for the July 4th holiday, the CCRTA has announced the addition of a round trip on July 4th. Get all the details right online at capeflyer.com. Well, it wouldn't be the 4th of July without fireworks. Pulling off such a large display takes a lot of preparation and a lot of teamwork. The fireworks are shot from a barge in Lewis Bay. Marina manager Joe Gibbs and MEA director Dan Horn talk about early morning logistics and coordination uh, efforts. Usually the day starts early with a meeting and we deliver the fireworks uh, crew that comes to Hyannis uh, out to the barge. Uh, this year they, uh, was, I think half the crew we had with us uh, going out in the morning, the other half came on the fishing boat with the fireworks because a, a, uh, a licensed shooter actually has to be with the fireworks at all times. Uh, so they delivered them in, brought the fire crew out. Uh, they, from there they loaded uh, all the boxes from the lobster boat onto onto the barge, uh, got everything ready, uh, got the, uh, the go-ahead from the fire department to, to start loading. Uh, generally uh, from there we've, uh, we've worked with uh, the folks at the Hyannis Yacht Club. They allow us to borrow, uh, if anybody's been on the water, the large inflatable uh, markers. Uh, they let us borrow those. We place those around the perimeter to, so people know or should hopefully know enough to uh, to stay away. Um, some folks uh, definitely like to get closer, but you know the concern is sometimes is not that if something happens that it goes up and explodes, that if it goes sideways, as happened in I believe it was Falmouth many years ago. Um, so the we work with them. The fire department comes out uh, to stand by along with us. The Barnstable Police uh, comes out, works with us all day. Uh, works pretty well. We all coordinate with each other. Uh, the fire inspectors will come back, uh, back usually in the morning they'll come out to do an inspection and late in the afternoon they'll come out. You know once we get going for the day, you know, uh, most of the, the day can be a little boring. It's just more or less making sure everybody's safe, you know, shooing people away. Uh, the fireworks crew uh, this year was very self-sufficient. They, they come with everything. Uh, so it's great, uh, and it, it's really just during the day. It, it's it's keeping everybody safe. Uh, you know, once the evening rolls around, we start changing gears. It was windy this year, so there wasn't a lot of uh, there wasn't a lot of traffic for say um, in Lewis Bay. So it wasn't too bad. But Egg Island, where we're immediately adjacent to, is probably the biggest destination area of Hyannis to go to anchor and to, to hang out. Popular uh, recreational spot. It's po very yeah, popular. Right. You know, and, and, and with that too is when, you know, one thing when we set our markers out, we have certain distances that the Coast Guard as well as the Fire Department have distances that it has to be away from the barge. You know, we use uh, some equipment that we bought from our natural resource folks that gives us a distance, um, like a laser distant range finder to uh, determine how far they are away. Um, and in that we keep with the, trying to keep a channel open between Egg Island and our security zone to the, uh, to the south, as well as to keep a small channel between uh, Fiddlehead Rock and the firework zone on the north, uh, so people can pass, pass through there. So they there. get to points in Yarmouth. Right, so they can get really to, to points in Yarmouth, yeah. the back side of Egg Island. Right. And, uh, and what we've done the last few years, and it's worked out very well, is uh, because the prevailing wind is southwest, as we make our northeast corner uh, well generally twice as big as is what it uh, what's required because that's where all the fallout goes. Chief Procurement Officer David Anthony has more. Um, one of the things about doing a barge show are the sight lines. 
We are, in some cases, almost three quarters of a mile away from where the fireworks are going. So the small fireworks really, um, they, they don't show up very well. There is either houses or boats or trees or things like that in the way for some of the viewers. So we have to spend the money on the larger fireworks. And generally, um, the way fireworks are set up, you have three inch salutes, which are the, the small bangs. Um, then you have five inch shells, six inch shells, seven inch shells, eight inch shells, which make up the bulk of the show. And then you have the really big shells. Um, you have the 10s, the 11s, the 12s. And the 12 inch shells, I mean, they're about the size of a basketball and uh, they're very expensive. Um, and a show like the one that Barnstable has is anywhere between 12 and 20 12 inch shells. And uh, they're very hard to get right now. There are only a few fireworks companies that have them, but we require them because of the site. It's not just a short fireworks display, but a full day of fun filled activities, says Community Services Director Lynn Poyant. Um, and, you know, it really is something that a lot of families have made a tradition in their, in their family. Uh, you'll see people coming out here to Aslton Park. Um, they've got their picnic blankets, their picnic baskets, they have chairs, they have all kinds of little um, whirly things uh, just to keep the kids entertained. Now that the town has uh, bands that perform to provide entertainment, it really provides a long, or not a long, but a nice Evening Chief event. Procurement Officer David Anthony seconds that thought. Over the years, uh, we've become much more sophisticated in um, planning around the event. Back in 2001, the fireworks were the event, and it went off um, in Lewis Bay, and, and that was pretty much it. Um, and over the years, the community has come together, uh, the arts community, uh, the radio stations, the business community, and certainly the town have come together to make a much broader and larger event on Lewis Bay. So you'll have music beforehand. I believe this year we had the town band out on Town Green. You have, in the past, we've had Cape Cod Symphony. Um, there will be groups from the conservatory that play. Um, all of that gets coordinated so that it's much more of a destination to downtown with the culmination being the fireworks display. Gids in the and evening. Horn comment on what takes place once the crowds have long headed home after the grand finale. Coordination between the town and the pyrotechnic specialists is key for everyone's safety. Yeah, after the after the main part of the show goes off, the uh, the fireworks uh, shooter is responsible for going and verifying that there's there's no shells left uh, in in the tubes. So they actually have to manually, you know, peek into all the tubes to make sure that they're all there. And uh, I think as you'll probably see in, in some of the other video, you can actually see, see the shells that some of them are actually, um, they're almost like taped together. A lot of them are wired together, where sometimes the wires do come apart, or the other ones actually have a, f a more fuse-like part when you get into the finale, where they just one goes to the next. Sometimes the fuses melt or they break off. Uh, so they have to go back and they'll determine how many are left and then they have to uh, to manually fire those again they can't once they go in the tubes it's just not safe to take them out unless they go up uh, so generally they'll go through uh, there's always one or two that seem to uh, fall off and when you have uh, i don't know hundreds and hundreds of shells that go off you know one or two really you know isn't a bad equation i think uh, so they once they determine that they'll they'll generally let us know so we know that it's uh, so there's no surprises when they start going off uh, they'll hey, shoot those off and you uh, and and the other component is you can't finale it's not all over for us right we, we still have to be out there uh, until that last right sometimes that's the critical time because you don't know you know while they're checking everything you know the, the fireworks then, shooter comes out of the you know usually they're in a hut you know they come out of the hut it, sometimes there will be still some embers and stuff going that are on the barge. Uh, so it's actually, that can be a little more critical to make sure that everything's okay. Right, and the other folks that are, have already seen the, seen the finale, they're already heading right. back. They're so honking it, their horns. So they're, they're honking their horns, having a great time, but we still have to maintain that security zone, right. which is a little bit challenging at the end of yeah. a, yeah. you know. End yeah. of a display. As long as the weather holds, it will be all systems go for Thursday evening, July 4th. The interviews we've shown are part of a larger 4th of July fireworks program, now airing in rotation on Channel 18. For Barnstable Today, I'm Melissa Chartrand.